Welcome to Unfiltered, Pixel Pro Audio's weekly show. Hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified of when the newest and latest video comes out. On this episode, we're talking about me. Hey, welcome back to Pixel Pro Audio Unfiltered. I'm Tay, this is David, and that's Jay. And today we're going to be talking about... About uh, your studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to flip things on their head and we're going to ask you some questions. Yeah. All so right. So Tay is usually our host, but um, we want to ask him questions. So we're taking over for the day. What do you want to know? I mean, you know everything about me. <laughs> Unfortunately, <hope> yes. <laughs> 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 really <hope> wow <laughs> <laughs> moving on he looks uncomfortable he's like <laughs> i'm good <laughs> i want them to know everything <laughs> okay so all right what do you want to know what is it that you do with your studio tell us generally um what you like what, what the purpose is of it okay um it's the purpose of it is a podcasting studio i have it set up where i am at my computer i have a microphone and then my co-host has a microphone on the other side of the desk um, and we both talk into it at the same time, and we record that audio, and I produce it later and develop mm-hmm. it into a podcast, and then I publish it out. Okay, nice. So it's it's primarily a podcast studio. Yeah, and you know you can do voiceover, and I plan to um, eventually sit at the computer area and uh, with instruments, and maybe do some uh, um, recording of instruments, guitars, keyboards, that sort of thing at the time. Okay, so it's. I kind of planned it where I could set up a keyboard on the desk or have there's room to strum a guitar, that sort of thing. I thought he was a drummer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are you going to do about that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the main thing. The, please address this I problem. Am a, I am a drummer um, first. Uh, I've been d- drumming since I was like 14. Uh, and I plan to uh, record myself drumming eventually. And that's another goal of mine. Um, <clears throat> and my studio is right above... Um, a basement section that I'm going to set up my drum set and record down there remotely um, and then just kind of record myself doing some drums to a click track, maybe um, get some beats going. Excuse me. And maybe I'll uh, throw some beats out on this uh, episode sometime. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, are you going to be like drilling holes to the basement and running a bunch of like analog cable or are you going Dante? (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I would love to do Dante. That you know that it seems like it's yeah, where it seems overkill. I think you can drill a, drill a big enough hole. And, yeah, I know. Well, well, so I do have hardwood floors and stuff, and I you know it's it's there's places where I can sneak cables down and stuff. But I'm going to do a eight channel preamp, which I have already. I have a, a PreSonus Digimax LT. Uh, it's an eight channel preamp with ADAT out, and so I will just put that in the basement next to my drums, um, record eight inputs. Um, and then run the optical cable up through the floor uh, directly into my interface. And that's what I want to start out with. Yeah. Eventually, I'll upgrade that. So you're going to ignore those wonderful audience mic preamps you have and <laughs> bypass that? Well... I mean, not that the Digimax preamps are bad or anything, but the audience, I think, are kind of... Yeah. It, it is. A step yeah, above yeah, that. Definitely. Right? I have an audience. Margin. I have an audience ID forty four right now that I I'm currently using and I love it. Um, I just want to see what I have and see what I can do. This is the first time recording drums myself, and so I have no idea what I'm doing exactly. Okay. Um, and I, I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get in there and see what I can do myself. Uh, yeah. So see what when is this big test going to happen? Um, it, it's getting closer, probably in a couple months. Here. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice. Um, but I eventually, if that works out and I'm doing great, I'll do at eight at out. Um, you know, some channels, but I think I I can uh, wire up a couple um, my cables that go up right into the audience. Yeah, yeah that's good. what I would do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those preamps are sweet. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So uh, speaking of gear, tell us about what you have for gear. Um, maybe your your preamps and your outboard <clears throat> compressors and stuff. Okay. Um, I have for the two main channels. I have. Uh, two channel strips, the Joe Meek 6Q. Uh, it's preamp. That's know. the original 6Q, right? It's, it's the original, okay. not okay. not the version two. Um, so it's a 6Q uh, preamp uh, compressor and then EQ on there. Does that have digital in and out, or is that the yep. difference? No, it, it does. Okay. Yep. Um, so I can also run that out if I wanted to digitally. Oh, yeah. um, mm. 
And what's do you know what the digital output on that is? Is it like ADAT or SPDIF? It's, it's SPDIF. Yep. It is. Yep. Okay. And I have those. So the the two main mics are going into that, and then I go into a uh, DBX ten forty six. Uh, oh no, I go into the gate first. So I have a okay. ten seventy four quad gate. Okay. DBX, and then that gate goes into another outboard compressor DBX ten forty six, and so I've already now I have two compression um, steps in there. Okay. Um, to kind of get it up, you know, compress it, and then get get the limiter up. <laughs> and then, uh, what? I and didn't then say <laughs> it goes Don't out. Of, <laughs> it goes out of there into the ID forty four, and then um, then I record, and then I've got some presets in there where I um, I add another two or one compressor on each channel mm-hmm. um, Wait, what? with plugins. With plugins, okay. And then I also on what, do you, a, what do you use for plugins? I just use the the basic Presonus uh, like the Studio fat, One, the Fat Channeler. Um, no, it's just a compressor plugin. Just, just a compressor, compressor plugin. Okay. Um, someday I'll mess around with all the plugins that I have available to me right now and yeah. figure out if one sounds better than the other. Um, that's the magic of plugins. You can just plug them in and plug them out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, yes, oh! plugins. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're called plugins. Oh boy. So um, it's it's easy it's easy to 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 try them. Anyway, uh, <laughs> PPA wisdom being yeah. dropped on you here today. Oh, oh, <laughs> so uh, then at, at the end on the main output, I also have some more, uh, like one more compressor and then a couple more limiters um, to really get that, the peaks up or the, the, the main volume up. So you do multiple stages, like just of light compression and light limiting, so, so it sounds many, natural? Yes. yes. How many stages do you go through? Would I you have, say from, the, from analog to digital to, to your end product? What are we talking about? On, on each channel, there's at least four compression. Wow. Wow. Two outboard wow. and at least two uh, plugins. Wow. Right? wow. Awesome. So they're, like you said, they're little, little mini steps, so I can incrementally get, that, get it down and then boost the signal up yeah. at the same time. Nice, nice. So we've got a special surprise today. You've brought a microphone from your studio. Well, yeah, we didn't talk microphones. No. Yeah. What <clears throat> well, do you have over there? I brought with me today, <clears throat> and I'll start talking talking into it so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Okay. I'm going to put some headphones on so I can hear the listen. Yeah. Oh, we got cord issues. Okay. Man, when are we, when are we going cordless? <laughs> <clears throat> Tesla was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. I used to start out with with uh, large condenser microphones, uh, like the the MXL 990. Um, I had a C1, uh, a Studio Project C1. I love that one, but I quickly found out doing podcast and voiceover stuff that um, large condenser microphones are great for a lot of things, but they aren't necessary. And they're great for podcasting, but ideally, dynamics is where I wanted to go with this, so I wouldn't get a lot of bleed. And um, mm-hmm. these are end fire. They're at their, the, you can talk directly into them. So like the ones uh, you guys are using, the, the 2008, yeah. um, you have to address it from a particular side. And right. if you don't, right. you, start, you start missing that, that right. sweet spot. Right. And if you pull it too far away, you get a lot of room noise. Yeah. And if you pop right into it, you get problems like that, which you don't, I mean, there's usually a huge chunk of foam inside those things that makes yep. the, that explosion, the plosives, the plosives go, <laughs> you know, explode the speakers. And yeah. So I moved and I got these, I got both channels have them. Um, so we have basically matching signals in the studio. How does it sound? Mike through, um, it sounds fantastic. The end. Yeah. And, um, so I have these. Um, I love them. B- the BB40s are kind of like um, not well known, I-, I guess. Well, um, they, they came out about two years ago, I want to say. So, mm-hmm. was it? Yeah, they're they're wow. a relatively new microphone. And uh, you know, I, I did a lot of comparisons. I took home the the Rode uh, Procaster. I took home the the Electro Voice RE320. I took home an uh, Shure SM7B. And I took home. There's an MXL and there's a CAD. Uh, or no, mm-hmm. sorry, Golden Age mic mm-hmm. uh, two broadcast microphone. So I took all the broadcast microphones um, that I had available to me. I took them home and I tried them out. And <clears throat> excuse me, 
this one I like the best. I like how it looks, and I I was really really happy with it. And the price point is is comparable to the um, RE320. It's a little under um, what the Sure is, but mm -hmm. uh, and you know the Sure sounds nice, but I think this sounds great too, and uh, I love it. And we're just plugging straight into the Claret over here, so you don't need extra parts to get the level up, mm -hmm. which is nice. So I, I will always recommend people try this microphone. Um, it might not be the best one for you exactly, but right. um, that's the beauty of having a lot of options uh, to try. So yeah. um, I do I did like the uh, the RE320. I do like the Shure SM7B, but I also really like the BP40. So I'm happy with this for sure. Sweet. Yeah, enough of this. I, I have to join you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Grab that one right what? there. Grab that one. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so we have two of these in today, so you can kind yeah. of really hear the difference with my voice. I don't even know. Which, where should I put this thing today? Pretty just close. Talk, just talk right into it, uh, maybe a, a few inches away. Okay. These are the actual microphones from my studio, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. This is amazing. Don't mess them up. Okay. I'll try not to breathe on them. <clears throat> this is cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, David? Left out. A little left uh, out. Uh, Fortunately, we only have okay. two of these. <laughs> yep. That's okay. And, um, yeah, usually when we, you know, even get them in stock in, at the store, they go pretty quickly. They, yes, so. they do. I know. They, these guys keep telling me, order more, order more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Tay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just still talking about me. <laughs> um, so, we, we talked a little bit about interfaces. Yeah. Um, how did you come to the ID44? What what was your process? Where did you start and how did you get there? Okay. Well, my first interface was a Focusrite 18920 and that had a lot of inputs and that was a real, a real versatile unit. <clears throat> and I really liked it. And my, my plan for that was to also record drums at the time and plug in, but I just never, I didn't, never got to that point. Um, I moved to a how my new house and I built a studio room and I built a desk around my next interface which was the PreSonus 1602 uh, studio live board and I built the desk around uh, the mixer and it looked amazing yeah it um, did. it really did but after about a year and a half <laughs> about, a, about after a year and a half I wasn't using it for like it in its full functionality. Like I wasn't using all the inputs. I wasn't using the fat channel built in. Um, I, I, so I liked it. I loved it. I just wasn't using it correctly. And it didn't have automation. Um, there wasn't transport controls that were connect, uh, directly connected to the DAW I was using, Studio One. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted that. I wanted to be able to fade in and out music when I wanted to, but I wanted to do it live during the broadcast. And it, that the capabilities weren't there with that one. Mm -hmm. They are with the v version three, right? The uh, the studio oh, live the series three, yes. The series yes. three, um, PreSonus does have that in yep. in their mixers, but at the time, I the one I had didn't have it. So I I got rid of it, and I upgraded uh, to the Audient ID forty four. And coincidentally, we all jumped on board. Yeah, we, we all have yeah. one. Well, I. Yeah, it's just such a great hub for like, yeah. for a studio, you know, with yeah. the expandability, the multiple monitor, so you can run two sets of monitors off of it. and The yep. amazing preamps, the, amazing the awesome preamps. converters. You can bypass the preamps in the first two channels, so, like, that is not a thing anymore. Like, ah, uh, bugs me. So when mm -hmm. I saw that, I was like, I got to get it. Yeah. And that's what I do. I, I plug directly into the, the inserts on yeah. one and two. Um, and then I run out of the USB-C into the computer, and it works great. And there's, the, like I said before, the ADAT in, so I can record up to eight channels, you know, uh, off of a different uh, uh, a preamp somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also four channels there that I can plug directly into if I want. Um, and it has the monitor control, so that's, like you said, it has two outputs. So mm -hmm. I have monitors that are on my desk, and then I also have the other outputs going to the, um, the headphone amp. So that's how we monitor okay. during the show. So um, do you mute, do you switch between them or do you just mute the monitors and then go right to the headphone amp? Yeah, I can okay. just, um, with the monitor controls, I can turn on the speakers and I can turn on the the other uh, outputs. Right. So I, with the touch of a button, I can turn it on and turn it off and I don't have to mess with anything on, on the computer. So nice. it's been really nice and I probably will keep this interface for a long, long time. It's built like a like a tank, uh, so I've, I've enjoyed it uh, uh, 
greatly yeah. and immensely. And to get around my transport control, I picked up a PreSonus fader port that sits on my desk too. And I can, um, if I need, you know, hands free off of the mouse and keyboard, I can go right to that and do some selections and bounce around uh, in Studio One with that thing. And my plan is to also wire that downstairs. Okay. So it's next to my drum set. So when I go down, I can just hit record there. Right. You know, get everything set up on Studio One. So I could, all I have to do is go downstairs, you know, hit the record button and mm -hmm. play away. And then stop nice. when I want, take a break or whatever, start it again. So yeah. that's my plan with the remote uh, transport control. Nice. Um, so yeah, I, I think I, I think I have it, it all. I, I love the way my studio is set up. I've got outboard gear, um, that and then that goes right into the computer via the interface. And then I also do some, you know, I guess post production mm -hmm. with plugins, and uh, and then I just uh, export the files and yeah, I do it. Make history. Yep. <laughs> Go Packers. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's a Packer podcast. Uh, go, go Packers. Go, yeah, we've go talked Packers. About that a little bit, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Um, you got anything else? You wanna, that's a that's uh, a nice yeah. setup. Yeah. That is. Yeah. That's yeah. solid. Um, I think yeah, I think I have everything I I I need. Um, are you ever gonna get any? Like you mentioned, doing things so that there is minimizing editing. Are you, are you, have you ever looked into like getting a cough drop or anything like that where the, you push a button if you have to cough so you don't have to like, oh, go in. <coughs> have, you, have you ever heard of a cough drop? Well, the ones you eat. Yeah, no, <laughs> I was really confused. They call it a cough drop. Okay. You know, same effect. Right. It drops out. Yeah. You get rid of the cough. Yeah. That's great. Uh, and it, like in, in most broadcast places like radio stations, they have the cough yeah. drop. Uh, sure. I, I, I thought about it. I looked them up. Um, I think like there's a few brands out there that make them, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but it's basically just a big old mute button that yeah. you can push yourself. Right. Well, um, any, that, you know, Ryan, your, your co-host Ren could yeah. push the button. I don't know if he yeah. would. He should. I don't know if he actually would. He, he'd require a lot of training. You can tell him I said <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> he would. So, uh, so what yeah. Other, what other stuff are you planning on getting? Like what's your next upgrade? I think my, my next Upgrade would probably be, um, this is going to sound lame, but it's um, boom arms. Right now I have two it's not lame. I no. have two Heil HB1s, and they are boom arms, and they're great, um, and they were really affordable. Yeah, but they're the spring, the outside spring, external spring ones. Mm -hmm. And um, when I move around, because I do move, I move towards my co-host, I move back towards the screen, so I'm moving on, around a little bit. Uh, and... When I move the microphone, I can hear it. So I go really slow, <laughs> really, and it, you can hear that ringing. In a lot of instances, you're always you're just setting and forgetting the, the boom arm. But when you're moving around a lot, uh, it it can cause a lot of noise. So I would like to upgrade to the Rode uh, PSA one, and that is an internal uh, spring systems. Okay. Uh, Have you looked into like a shock mount? Yep. And then on the end of that um, boom arm. I would like to get the BP40 compatible shock mounts. Okay. Uh, they'd make them. Um, this one has a ring mount here, you can see, uh, and that fits on it. That came with the microphone. Um, that one has a shock mount on it, which works okay, but they make a particular um, shock mount for the BP40. Okay. So this is yours? Yeah. That's okay. a um, kind of a general, uh, generic, universal one. So yeah, I'd upgrade those two things. Um, that would help a lot during the show, uh, and then cabling too. I think I would upgrade ca some cabling and yeah. get like specific lengths that go directly from the microphone down, down that boom arm and go right into the input uh, for the first channel strip. Yeah, uh, and have it just uh, just enough cable to to have that there, and it's all tied up nice and neat. And that's that's what I'd look for. Right now, you look behind my desk, and there it's it's kind of like a rat's nest. Mm -hmm. um, there's cables, different lengths. Um, not some some aren't long enough, and you're always like, Argh. so it. <clears throat> that's what so I would do. So you want to get nice specific lengths. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that when you move your piece. Of your, your, <laughs> see, that's the problem. I like I when I built my my last home studio, I made all the wiring myself. So I had all the lengths, yeah. all nice and perfect. Isn't that nice? It's so nice until you get another piece of gear. Right. And then you're like, <laughs> mm. and you have to make another cable and cut all your cable ties, you know, and of course oh, I yeah. did cable ties. I didn't do the old Velcro. The, the Velcro. I did yeah. Yeah. cable ties. So then if you're back there, it's a nightmare. So 
Well, well I would consider that. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be, you know, right about now, I'll be showing some um, pictures of my studio. I have a rack system to the left of me, and that has my main uh, outboard gear. And I also have some auxiliary gear below the desk that I'll show. And that's just stuff I've collected over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff I don't really use, I could use when I start make, uh, doing drumming and stuff. I, you know, have some different preamps and that sort of thing. And then uh, my main stuff is in front of me. And then I have a little island, uh, um, little island desk with the two mics on either side. Um, so I would upgrade physical stuff. It kind of sounds lame, but eventually down the road, I would probably maybe get some other compressors, some outboard compressors um, to add to the chain. Just to uh, I don't know, add some color, add some variation. Distressor maybe. Yeah, that'd be kind of oh, cool. Gosh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, for yeah. broadcasting, you want kind of clear sound transparent um you don't want a lot of noise and and grit or anything but i think i like the joe meeks because they add a little color to uh to voice and i like that sound rather than uh you know a sterile broadcast you know radio sound i like a little more warmth yeah Um, it makes it sound a little more authentic like what you're used to hearing over the radio because radio is real dirty yeah really compressed it's really dirty and yeah um so you kind of get a little bit of that from the Joe Meek, I think. Yeah. And they also have the iron transformer, which you always have in. That, that mm-hmm. sounds awesome. It's got this low mid, like, saturation to it. It sounds great. Yeah. And I think the only other thing I would get right now is, um, I think we talked about it in a couple episodes ago, or the early episodes, is um, like a MIDI controller. I need to, uh, I'd mm-hmm. like one of those um, to you know, trigger sound clips. Um, that I do right now, I, I do it on the computer. Oh, the, but I, you're talking about the Atom. Like a physical, yeah, the Atom, Atom or yeah. MPD-218 or something like that, where I can actually hit the buttons, load them up and hit the buttons during the live broadcast and have them recorded live. Right. Um, also, just like to have a MIDI controller and those MPD-218s and the Atom, man, if you can get good at those, you can really yeah. do some cool drumming stuff on them. Sure, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. But that, that would be a, another, another thing I'm going to get soon for the studio. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you around the drum next time.